Cigarettes on cigarettes, my mama think I stank I got burn holes in my hoodies, all my homies think it stank I miss my cocoa butter kisses I miss my cocoa butter kisses Cigarettes on cigarettes, my mama think I stank I got burn holes in my hoodies, all my homies think it stank I miss my cocoa butter kisses I miss my cocoa butter kisses Okie dokie, I'll keep, keep it low key like Thor Lil Bro, or he'll go blow the loudie. Saudi if sour Saudi, Wiley up off peyote, wildin' like that coyote. If I sip any any, my belly just might be outy. Pull up inside a huggy, start skiing, hutch a duggy. I just opened up the pack and an hour, I'll ask my lucky. Tonight she just yelling, fuck me. Two weeks she'll be yelling, fuck me. You still like orange cassette tapes with Timmy, Tommy, and Chucky. And Chucky, Jesus, pieces, Jesus, pieces, sing Jesus, love me. Provising inside my eyes so my grandma would fucking hug me. Yo, generation above me, I know you still remember me. My afro look just like that is. Y'all taught me how to go on. Cigarettes on cigarettes, my mama think I stink I got burn holes in my hoodies, all my homies think it's dead I miss my cocoa butter kisses I miss my cocoa butter kisses I miss my cocoa butter kisses Cigarettes on cigarettes, my mama think I stink Welcome back to the show. Chris here. Cam there. Cam, what up, man? Hey, man. What's going on, brother? Not a whole lot, bro. Just excited to knock out the second episode of the podcast that we... So, I think we should get into that real quick. We're under the... Um, we're, we're in the process of re- rebranding everything. I think uh, Cam and I have come to a real good structure with the show and what we want to do going forward in the future and like just how we're going to present it to you guys and you know with what i had going on with i record this podcast in my front yard that's still basically going to be the backbone of this show i guess you could say because we're still going to be doing interviews and you know hopefully if everything goes right then you know i don't want to get too ahead of ourselves but our next show we'll have our first guest there's always going to be cam and chris in every episode So, some interviews might not have Cam, some interviews might not have Chris, some interviews might just be just a hodgepodge of people that you've never heard, but we're going to do our best to, like, fit it in and what we've got going on. We don't know if we're going to stick with making a millennial. We don't know if we're going to stick with I record this podcast in my front yard. We're going to try to figure that out real soon. As soon as we do, it's just going to be that one singular brand, and you guys are going to be able to find us a lot easier on your different platforms and think just stick with us and um cam yeah man like with you know with the website and everything which is at, right now at making a millennial podcast.com you know we, we've got some cool things going for us and on that website you can actually email us and you know actually a little bit more about the email address so do you want to give that out and tell them how that they could reach us if they want to leave us a comment leave us some uh some critiques or even if you would like to be a guest on the show we're open to anybody coming on and and talking to us and if you listen to the show and you feel like you got something that you can offer to to old podcastville then you could shoot us an email <laughs> old podcastville yes hey man, so, we're the mayors <laughs> so you could just uh shoot us a Email at info at, at making a millennial podcast dot com. It's a little long, but yeah, just type in um, info at making a millennial podcast um, dot com, and then just with it, just have a little bit of background information, um, and then we'll be checking those daily. So once you submit something, either let us know or we'll we'll, we'll figure out. We'll see it whenever you actually submit it. And then, um, yeah, we can figure out when would be the best time for you to come up on the podcast. So um, I'm remote and he's remote. So if you're in the um, the triangle area of North Carolina, so that's kind of like central eastern North Carolina, 
um, let me know if you want to be on the podcast. I can come out to you. Um, and then Chris, he is also in Montgomery, Alabama. So if you're in Alabama or Montgomery, Alabama, Central Alabama, then uh, just let, let us know if you uh, want to be on the podcast and we can also come out that way too. So it's all about trying yeah. to uh, get to know our get to know everybody. We want to get to know everybody on a on a personal level um, with podcasts, and really just start to relate to um, everybody that's listening. Let let everybody have a have a chance to talk. Yeah, I think that's the cool thing because um, my brother uh, was listening to the first episode, and he he was like basically sitting to himself, but wanted to add to the conversation that we were having. And I feel like with, uh, you know, that uh, that outlet that we can bring people on here and you don't necessarily have to be in North Carolina or Alabama. I, what Cam was saying is like, you know, we could do if, if you are there. Great. You know, we could do like a more intimate setting. I, he could come out to you. I could come out to you, whatever. But there's also ways that you could be in California and we could still be able to uh, let you know how we can record you to where you could send it to us or do whatever. But we'll we'll be able to to mash it all up into a nice little fancy interview like right now we are obviously not in the same room but whenever you hear this hopefully it's going to sound like we are so like we say man we're learning but we've we've done pretty good with what we've got so far and i you know with the website i think it looks dope um cam's done all that by himself like that the website is straight up cam so whenever y'all see all that hard work that you know we're both putting in on each of our ends i always like to say we and it's not just me and cam but it's everybody else too because getting feedback from you guys helps and you know just every little thing and and even if it's criticism or if it's uh like my brother said just he wanted to add to the conversations and i think that's the mark of a decent podcast whenever you want to just jump in there and add your two cents to the conversation. So with that, I think uh, that kind of got that little little bit of information out of the way that we wanted to tell you guys. Um, this episode, I think, is going to be kind of the same as the first one. It's, it's not going to be necessarily uh, as all over the place as the first one. But we're just trying to kind of uh, give you guys a little bit more of, um, you know, we could sit here and tell you our life stories or we could sit here and you know do a podcast and talk about topics and you know just things like that and I think you get a lot more of us and our personality our humor and things of that matter we have a a lot of time to lay our stories out but I think at first it's good for you guys who don't know us you know a lot of us do know us but the people that you know that are listening to this podcast don't know me that well and the people that I know most of them, some of them know you, but, you know, there's a lot of people that are listening because of, you know, on my end that, you know, don't necessarily know you and, and the type of guy you are. And I think it's nice for both of those groups to get at least another episode of uh, kind of just us and, and our dynamic. Because, man, honestly, like the past couple, I think, you know, month or two since we've been talking about this, I've got to know you a lot more, even though. You know, we know each other pretty well. Uh, we spent a lot of time with each other, especially when you were down here. There was a summer that, you know, we, we chilled pretty hard. But I think we've gotten into a lot. We've got to pick each other's brains a lot more with doing something like this. So yeah, I, I, I think agree. that's been real fun. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a different uh, a level of knowing each other because, you know, um, before we used to have fun and everything, but... You know, we'd have the, you know, the random deep talks, but now it's like actually uh, there's like a point to it, you know, before it was just kind of hanging out and just, you know, you know, just talking about whatever pops in our mind type of deal. So, yeah, man, I'm, I'm glad that we started this podcast journey as well. Yeah, bro, like I, like I tell everybody, like, it's just so nice to have someone else who's like, you know, just down for it, bro. Like, you got to really be. The, it, a podcast can't be something that you just think about on Sundays and then sit down and record. It's it's a week long process just to uh, figure out, you know, kind of uh, bullet points, and then after you do the podcast, then you go into audio editing, and then you go into promoting the podcast. And that's that's when the real work starts. <laughs> for real, I mean, this is easy. It's, we've already sat down and have ten minutes talking right now. You know, this is nothing, but. 
the yeah, exactly like you said, like the real work is like afterwards, like you know, tonight one of us is gonna be up doing this shit, and then we're gonna try to push it out, you know, um, whenever we can, and we're still working on whether we wanna um, just kind of when the right time for you guys to consume is, like when when y'all like to get your podcast, like that's another thing that we're kind of asking y'all, like when what it. Uh, I just got totally caught with my words right there. <laughs> It'd be like that. I juked myself out with my words. Um, like, so we could put this out at the end of the week, and you could have that nice uh, Thursday or Friday end of the week type vibes. You know, you're getting ready for the weekend. We can bring you into the weekend. Or some people prefer to listen to a majority of their podcasts at the beginning of the week to kind of get them by. Or, you know, hopefully... We could do both of them <laughs> eventually, right. you know, if we, if we get enough traction, I know both <laughs> of us are very willing to do, to bring you guys as much content as you want. So we don't want you to ever worry about the fact that we'll not put out content. Cause if you want it, we'll do it <laughs> like some car salesman shit. <laughs> yeah, man. Cause you can really never have too much content out there nowadays, especially with how you everything's, can. everything's so saturated. Like, uh, as far as like any type of content that to really stand out, you have to have like solid content, but then you also have to have, you know, um, a lot of it because, you know, again, the more that you, uh, the more content you put out, the more that the internet looks at you as like a voice of authority or somebody that's like been on the internet compared to, you know, sparingly posting. So definitely a good little bullet point to hit. It's like when people talk about like Star Wars, like a lot of people are saying, oh, there's so many Star Wars movies coming out, like, I don't like it, or or Marvel. I'm like, well, Marvel's a little different, because you do have to kind of keep up with them, but Star Wars, like, if you don't want to go see them, don't fucking go see them. I do. Sorry. I love Star Wars. <laughs> Bring out all these Star Wars. Same. Dude, I wish... Like, go ahead. I, I was just going to say, like, one a year, uh, you, people get TV shows, you get a season of TV shows, so that's like... Eight weeks of a of a of a thing. You get eight weeks of Game of Thrones or eight weeks of whatever Grey's Anatomy, but you get one Star Wars a year, and people are saying that's too much. I don't get it. Yeah, dude. I, what I'm waiting on for Star Wars is when I was younger, I was huge into the Bounty Hunter books, and so Bro, I'm if waiting, you're about to say the Mandalorian right now, well, I'm waiting on them to have the. Um, have the bounty hunter like series or movies or whatever because you know they're all clones and like what, what's this boba fett he's like the son or a son of uh jango fett and um there's like a whole book that happen, talks about what happens after you know his father dies you know when uh he gets uh when he gets beheaded or whatever and i forgot where that fight is but it's a whole genesis yeah it's a whole nother series off of that i'm like i really want to see something with the bounty hunter man especially because you like, can it's see my str- face right now <laughs> especially a strong Bro. black lead character too you know <laughs> do, do i have something to tell you so cam have you heard about disney plus no Disney Plus is Disney's new streaming service that's going to come out in November. Okay. With Disney Plus, there is a television show in production right now from the same dude who directed The Lion King, and it is called The Mandalorian. It is about bounty hunters in between Return of the Jedi and uh, The Force Awakens, so episode six and seven. Why do you got to be on a streaming service, though? (laughs) Dude, uh, that. That's, that streaming <laughs> service is going to be brilliant. Yeah, the, it is. Uh, Man- Mandalorian is what uh, Boba Fett is. That's like his uh, his hometown. He's a Mandalorian. So it's basically a bunch of Boba Fett's running around. It's going to be kind of adult theme. But to go ahead and sell you on Disney+, Plus, which I shouldn't have to, but you get all of Star Wars, all of Marvel, and fucking Toy Story. Like... There's nothing else you can want. Yeah. Plus, whenever, whenever, so I think the service is going to drop whenever Endgame drops. Um, so if Endgame is available to be streamed or rent or bought anywhere, it's going to be on Disney Plus. So the second it's able to be bought on Blu-ray, you get it on that streaming service. You don't have to wait for another three months for it to come out on there. Yeah. So that's very nice. With I mean, the most popular movies these days are Star Wars and Marvel consistently year in a year out i know they're kind of slowing down on both of those 
Um, actually, also in other Star Wars news, uh, they're, I don't want to say confirmed, but everything I've seen, I've seen clickbait that says it's confirmed. Um, I think I saw where it is, but there's a lot of strong rumblings that the next trilogy that Star Wars is coming out with is going to be based on the Old Republic. Hey. So, that's going to be super dope. Bro, that was like, when you said the Old Republic, that reminded me of like the like my very first time I ever got into like gaming. Um, I know we're talking about Star Wars, but uh, the way I started even getting into gaming, right, was when Knights of the Old Republic came out on the original Xbox. I got that in Halo 2. I got it like the, the day the Knights of the Old Republic like came out just because like, uh, what was it, G3? Was it some type of gaming show that I always used to watch that like hyped it up. And G4? For, yeah, G4. Yeah, bro, man. G4 was the shit. R.I.P. A, <laughs> a R.I.P. G4, bro. Attack of the show, dog. Yes. Yeah, so then was it the man show was on there as well? Bro, G4 was the truth. We might need to have like a whole like G4 memorial podcast because right. there's so much. Sh- like, I think that TV channel kind of shaped my love for technology. I know it did. Shaped my love for technology, my love for games. I mean... That shit was, it was the truth back in the day. They had a X play with old dude and old girl. Yep, yep. Adam uh, Sessler and Morgan Webb. Yep. Don't forget about Olivia Munn. <laughs> right? Hell yeah, she started off on Attack of the Show, formerly yeah. the Screensavers. Yeah, man. That show was awesome. That was kind of like a nerd's five o'clock news. Yeah. Like because it came on every day. Um, they had little segments and, sh- and stuff. It was kind of. Kind of like a, a podcast in a way, just a visual one. Yeah, well, dude, now the nerd stuff is like pop culture. You know what I mean? Like, there's we're a, taking over. <laughs> there's a kid that just won three million dollars from a uh, from a Fortnite tournament. You know what I mean? Like, like that. Paga? Huh? Yeah, I, I guess, man. I just saw the headline. On it. I, didn't, I didn't even read the. I just saw the kid. You know, won three million from a from a Fortnite tournament. I was like, man. I was like, these nerds starting to get recognized now. Like, I, I, I'm definitely one of those nerds, but definitely starting to get recognized. And you know, uh, my, pop culture is making the way for them. My mama tell me, used to tell me I wasn't gonna do shit with video games. Right. <laughs> now I just became mediocre at them, and I don't have no money to show for it. If she would have just <laughs> let me flourish. Right. That is crazy, though, bro. He won more money. In a weekend playing Fortnite, than Tiger Woods ever has winning a Masters tournament. Damn. Or Novak Djokovic winning Wimbledon. I guess when you put it like that. <laughs> Crazy, bro. 16 yeah. years old. What would you do if you were 16 years old and you got $3 million? If I was 16 you... years old and I had $3 million bucks, honestly. You'd have to listen to, like, I mean, you... How much stock would you put in like your elders and shit, like your 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 parents? Because I mean, I know my parents never won three million dollars, so what, what are they going to tell me to do with it? You know, right? That'd be a, that'd be a real hard time. <laughs> yeah, you would I, hope you would hope that people around you are competent and like that there are people that like genuinely love you, but some people, man, they could, even their kids they take advantage of. Oh yeah. Well, let's see. I don't know. With three million dollars at sixteen, bro. I was, I know I had my car, so a lot of my money would have gone to my car. And then I was into some dumb stuff, so I know I probably would have thrown some pretty epic parties, you know. Um, God, dude. <laughs> oh, my God, bro. At 16? Yeah, bro. If it it would have been. You told me, <laughs> if you told me we have $500, to put on, $500 to put on a good party at 16, I'd have said we were going to throw the best party of all time. Yeah. <laughs> Three mi- 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 million? Oh, my God. Oh, man. And we There used to be parties with hardly anything because, you know, we used to have bonfires and stuff. And the bonfires were just as lit as some of the house parties, you know? I know it. But think about, like, throwing fucking dollars at the bonfire. <laughs> yeah i wonder if that kid's gonna end up getting signed you know because i think i think because he- all right so uh my cousin um valentine on mixer follow him he uh tries to keep me in the loop on a lot of streaming and stuff like that okay and uh i know that there are like teams okay so there's like streaming 
uh, groups and uh, like organizations and, and teams that sponsor people. I know that there's that. Yeah, all and I know of, of is FaZe. That's the only thing I know is FaZe Clan. So I'm assuming he's probably already... If he's not, he's the fucking biggest free agent since LeBron James. Like... I don't see how he could not have some kind of uh, some kind of deal. And, he, and if he does, uh, he's probably gonna get a little a little extension on that deal. If I had to guess, if they do it like sports, I don't know. I don't know how none of it works really. I need to get David. We need to get David back on. Uh, he was on one of the previous episodes on. Uh, I record this podcast in my front yard, but we didn't really get into um, uh, streaming as a business. Yeah, and absolutely. I think that would, that would that would be a cool episode to get some clarity on it because I know, I think he's got like twenty five hundred uh, followers or subscribers or whatever it is. On but Twitch. he's doing good on it. Yeah, uh, no, on he's on Mixer right now. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah. uh, he just got a PC too, so he's been doing it big. So shouts out to David. Yeah, but, um, I think I know. Be, I think it would be super interesting to see like um, to have him come on because, <clears throat> excuse me. There was the big, like, YouTube little issue that came out. Not issue, but, like, um, what's the T the or whatever with the owner of FaZe Clan. His name is FaZe Banks and then Tifu, right? So, like, they brought this one dude up. Um, into, like, he was already, he probably had, like, I want to say, like, 50,000 subscribers or something like that. And then he was uh, narrowing down on 100,000. But he wasn't growing very fast. And then um, FaZe Clan gave him a contract and then just instantly he started going into like the millions and millions right mm-hmm. but because he signed that deal when he was younger and just first coming into the industry um once he became super big and realized how much money he could get he was just like yo i'm suing phase i want to get out of this contract and um it's too, like i definitely like to hear his thoughts on you know uh teams and contracts and how gamers should be paid and what they should be paid on and stuff like that it's crazy because it's like happening so fast. That you, I don't even know. Like I can remember, back in the G four days, like you would see, like uh, they'd have a um, team fortress tournaments and shit. Like oh that. yeah! And, <laughs> like that was the early days of esports to me. And then it was like I was real into it, but nobody else was. And then it just disappears. Mm-hmm. And then flash forward to twenty seventeen. Now these dudes are getting paid like professional athletes. It's really crazy. And I don't think anybody has the answers to like exactly how this is all going to work out in the future. That's what um, I was talking to some people. I've, I've, I've presented this question because I saw it on Facebook. Okay. So you get the blue pill and you go back to 10 or you restart your life today at 10 years old. But you have the knowledge that you have now. Okay, so you're a 10-year-old in today's society, but you have the knowledge and wisdom that you have now. Yeah. Or the red pill, you flash forward to 50 years old today with $45 million in the bank. Which one are you doing? Oh, um, you know what? I don't want to flash forward to 50 years old. I mean, I want to be successful, but like, you know, I still want to enjoy my life no matter what happens. So if anything, I would go back with the knowledge I have now, um, even though the future is going to be completely different, just because like I haven't seen that part of my life yet. And I definitely want to see, you know, because I, I feel personally, once I get to a certain age, like there's not much left. You know, especially Pat, like, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> like, you're saying once you're 50, you're just done. <laughs> I'm, trying, out. I'm, I'm trying to be successful by 50, yes. I'm trying to not be doing, you know, I'm trying to be managing some stuff. I'm not trying to, you know, 50, 50 is where I'm trying to hit my peak, I guess. My peak of the, well, I don't want to say my peak. 50 is where I'm trying to be set. That's where I'm trying to be successful. But I still want to have all the, the memories of how I got to that success. Because, like, that's the part, that's part of life, you know? True that. I thought it was a no-brainer that I would go back to being 10. Because, first of all, I mean, childhood was dope. So, if you could go back and, like, you have your knowledge now, so you, you're going to appreciate it. But look at how easy it is to be successful as... 
a teenager in the YouTube slash streaming era. Yes. I don't want to say easy, like it's like everybody can do it. But if I feel like if I went back with the knowledge I have, I could definitely make it. Um, but I think what I was getting at with that is, so if you're 10 years old now, think about whenever you're 22, what the video game industry is going to look like. It's probably going to be bigger than sports. might be bigger than football. Who knows if football's still going to be around then? Sure, it probably is going to. But 12 years from now, football is probably going to look completely different. I mean, football now looks completely different than it did 10 years ago, especially on the pro level. There's a lot of stuff that they've changed, um, I think, for the better. But at the same time, you still want to see people go out there and get fucking smashed. Yeah, That's the point of watching it. But you feel bad afterwards because you see all these dudes with CTE and shit. So if I'm going back to being 10, I'm, I'll am play basketball, play football and shit, but that ain't going to be my dream. My oh, dream's yeah. going to be a ninja. <laughs> you know, like, fuck. Yeah, man. Honestly, I see in the future, um, I don't know, about 15 years, but I definitely feel that with the whole thing with VR and um, and then you got, you know... Elon Musk is uh, um, Neuralink. That that will just bring a whole nother dynamic to stuff. You, almost like Black Mirror, you know, where you you can almost feel the pain. Well, you do feel the pain, but it's all like inside your brain, but it's like still connected somehow. I don't know. I think it's gonna go towards like VR type stuff. Um, you could say you could say almost like Black Mirror to yeah. anything and and follow it up with anything fucking outlandish and it i would probably think <laughs> that it was really an episode like you could be like yeah man it's almost like black mirror like whenever you fucking turn into a dog and then all that shit i'd be like damn that sounds like a wild ass episode probably it hadn't happened but that, it's so crazy you know like that that shows just all over the place. Yeah, I mean it's not too it's all over the place, but it's not too too far fetched. I think that's what the scariest part is because it's just like. Uh, oh, I think yeah. every one of them could happen. Yeah, man, because technology is already honestly technology is fifteen, ten, fifteen years ahead of us. It's just we don't have access to that shit yet. You know what I mean? So like, if somebody decides to go down a certain path, we would have no idea about it until probably like ten years too late. You know what I mean? Just because they already had that technology there, and they've been implementing it, and they're on to like the whole, the next thing, the next level. I always remember hearing stories. My uncle was uh, pretty big in the military, and I always remember like my mom being like, "Yeah, I would ask him about uh, about things and stuff." And there'd just be things that he'd seen, as far as like technology. I mean, of course, he's seen some fucked up shit that he couldn't tell people. But as far as like what he knew was coming out, that like on the surface would seem harmless if he told somebody he still couldn't tell people so i'm assuming he probably saw cell phones way before anybody else did you know type deal so yeah and that's dude that's one thing that all right just about like people in general when they like i don't know when when they're trying to i don't want to say when they're complaining about everything but where is i going with it (laughs) Hold on, when that has to be all the time, bro. Right? Damn, I lost it, man. It was pre- I forgot you gotta what it was. Got to put pinpoints in there. Yeah, man. I should got to put a pin on it. Should have wrote it down. <laughs> it's all good. We'll cut it out. <laughs> nah, this all staying in. <laughs> so, um, you know, uh, what, 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 anything new this week, man? Like. Anything, because uh, I know I saw a movie that is a uh, pretty new uh, from came out last week, and it's a pretty big movie. I would say it's the new Tarantino movie, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yeah, I saw that, and I you haven't right? No, I have we, not seen it. We were just talking that you uh, don't even watch movies when they come out, so of course you haven't. <laughs> So, I'm not going to say anything to, like, uh, spoil it, but good movie. Uh, I think it definitely deserves two viewings about it. Um, if you're a Tarantino fan, uh, do you like Tarantino movies? Yeah, man. I, lo- I like Tarantino stuff. Okay, so, if you're going in expecting Django Unchained, 
or Inglorious Bastards or Pulp Fiction in terms of violence, Reservoir Dogs yeah. in terms of violence, you're not going to get that. What you're going to get is more of like the um, great dialogue from Tarantino movies, and it, it, it's funny. It's a good story. It's a real good like buddy movie between Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt, which those two do a fantastic job uh they're the best part of the movie in my opinion both of them do really good i think brad pitt probably is the best part of the movie uh story's great it's a real weird slash crazy take on uh you know the manson family who wasn't in it as much as you might think they're going to be in it but it's definitely the backbone of the movie uh so i would definitely say go watch it if y'all are out there and uh contemplating it it's a two and a half hour movie it probably could have been two hours but you know go in expect go when you go in expect to see a lot of talking a lot of funny moments and uh a very very satisfying ending dude let me tell you one unpopular opinion about um some tarantino movies all right so i like i like django kill bill pulp fiction all that stuff the only movie I really, really did not like is Inglorious Bastards. Like, I fell asleep during that, like, watching that movie the very first time. I specifically remember that, and I woke up, and the movie was over. And I was like, Dude. wow, like, I've never, like, I have fallen asleep during movies, but, like, usually if it has an action, you know, um, I can stay awake in it. Like, I don't know, my favorite movie, one of my favorite movies of all time is, like, 300. So, um, I don't know, it was pretty crazy to me that that he had a movie like that that I just kind of fell asleep, you know, watching, considering everything else is so good. That first, like, ten minutes of Inglorious Bastards is tough to get through. Because It might even be, like, 20 minutes where they're just, where he's talking to uh, the, uh, you know, they're hiding at the house in the beginning. Yeah. That's a very long, opening, dry scene. So I could kind of see it. I love that movie. But... <coughs> I think maybe give it another chance. Uh, maybe when you're a little more awake. Definitely don't. Um, yeah, it's definitely not one that is going to grip you into staying awake to watch it. So if you put it on and you're already not really into it, I don't, I don't think you're going to make it through <laughs> it. But I mean, yeah. I can see it, honestly, because it is... I don't know, actually. No, I can't. That's a good movie. You're tripping. <laughs> what? Nah, man. Compared to, <coughs> to me, I don't know. Compared for me, compared to Django or something like that, especially because Django, I don't know. It's there's that's probably one of my other favorite movies by him. Um, I think Django is my favorite movie by him, and about everything. So it'd be I would like to be like, oh yeah, uh, Pulp Fiction or whatever. But nah, Django for sure. Yeah. Yeah, man. I like I like Django. Um, what else is another movie he's done? Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction was good. Kill Bill. I, I, Kill Bill is just interesting. I really I I like it, but it's not my favorite. My favorite type of director is like somebody like Christopher Nolan. You know what I mean? So really like trippy, just like real super super dramatic uh, movies that you kind of have to watch a couple times. The Dark Knight like, is my favorite movie of all you know? time, and that has. A lot yeah. to do with Batman, a little to do with Christopher Nolan. Or not, nah, it has a little to do with Batman and a lot to do with Christopher Nolan, now that I think about it, because there's been plenty of Batman movies that I, I love, but because they're Batman, I would never, but I wouldn't consider any of them to be my favorite movie, because, you know, they're comic book campy movies for the most part with Batman. But the Dark Knight trilogy is fantastic, and Batman Begins is awesome. Dark Knight is awesome. Dark Knight Rises is still good. It's not great as the first two, in my opinion. But it's the Dark Knight is like... I mean, yeah. first of all, you get one of the greatest performances in film history. And Heath Ledger is the Joker. Then you get a great cop movie. Yeah. Then you get a great action movie. Suspense movie. Uh, there's a love story. And then there's fucking Batman. So, shouts out to Christopher Nolan for that. And Christian Bale, great Batman. <laughs> I haven't even... I, I'm going to come clean. I haven't ever seen Inception because I'm I'm afraid that it's going to, like, solidify the fact that I'm stupid because I'm not going to be able to get it. 
Bro, it's it's all right. It's 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 one of those things that you have to watch the movie because if I'm not gonna say like there's not a correct answer to the ending, right? So I'm just gonna say that there's not a correct answer. It's kind of like a little, like open ended, but it's one of those movies where. You cannot be texting on your phone while you're watching it because you're going to miss like a scene that's going to tie all the way back to the beginning that ties to something else. You know what I mean? And uh, you're just going to be like, like, what in the world? But Interst- Interstellar is my favorite. The Matthew McConaughey movie? For sure. All right. Yeah, man. <laughs> Gotta get the right, numbers right. up. Those are working <laughs> numbers. Dude, Wolf of Wall Street might be one of my favorite movies too. Yeah. Yeah, dude, Matthew McConaughey is kind of kind of, of a, an icon, a key icon, man. Kind of an icon. I mean, <laughs> to, to be an icon, you got to have iconic roles, which that one that he played where he was like, didn't he slim down like dangerously for a movie? I think I've seen pictures of him being like, <laughs> yeah. He really gets himself in the roles. Like he'll gain like thirty pounds and then he'll lose like you know a bunch of pound like a bunch of weight for his roles just got, so he can he, look the part. You know he's got an iconic really just get into it an like, iconic like, uh, you know, catchphrase like we said all right all right all right be a lot cooler if you did yeah he's got I mean he's just got that face <laughs> you see him at fucking Texas Longhorn games on the sideline you're like what is Matthew McConaughey doing. <laughs> yeah man I guess speaking of icon too um, you know you got Jade, what, Jaden Smith what Will, icon Smith, Smith. Will Smith uh, <laughs> yeah man dude he's been doing a lot of good lately though for real um, he just he had that thing called what on Skid Row in LA where he gave out free food and free water to like the homeless people and I believe he is a partial owner in like a water company too like the water they were giving out is like part of his company like imagine that being a family like yeah we we have our own water company like you you can literally make sure you're drinking the cleanest stuff like at all times like you're not drinking all this like well i know he was um, really helping out with like flint and shit one of the only few artists actually doing some shit about it's crazy like uh will smith too (laughs) has gotten really good with uh, social media and just uh, the internet platform. And I think his kids have helped him out a lot in that sense. That family is just man. Even uh, what's her face, Willow. She does good shit. Yeah, she has like a show, doesn't know. she? Um, not not Willow. No, not Willow. That's, Jada that's who's Jada. Yeah. Yeah, she has a show. They all they all are kind of like influencers for real for real, the whole family. Like Will Smith has become big on YouTube now after he started doing That's what I'm like saying. his own vlogs and then uh, he did the he did the stuff with Yes Theory where he jumped out of a, a helicopter. He bungee jumped Have out of the helicopter. Have you seen that picture the Grand from Canyon. when he's doing that and it's like <laughs> he looks just like Uncle Phil? There's a oh man yeah there's a picture what? no uh, just Google Will Smith. Uncle Phil, I mean, it's uh, probably gonna be kind of hard to find like that, but I know, I know there's a picture from when he is bungee jumping where he's like kind of taking a selfie and he looks just like Uncle Phil. We'll uh, we'll link it somehow so you guys can find it. Maybe make it like the fucking cover to the episode, <laughs> but uh, it's there. It, oh yeah, I see. It's it. just like it's, he's like taking a selfie, like he's like <laughs> upside down. That's yeah, so crazy. Man, they have the direct comparisons. <laughs> First things first. <laughs> Man, that's crazy that he's dead, bro. Like, uh, First Prince of Bel Air was probably my Cosby show. You know, our parents grew up on Cosby show, which is weird now, but I grew up, you know, on so other, so many other shows. But First Prince was always one that just like some of the lessons, man, just stuck with you. Yeah, that was on Nick and yeah, Night, came, right? Came was that, on Nick was that and Night for a while, Nick and, Knight. and then I think it came on like TBS when I was growing up. It would come on like dinner time, and then I remember when it did get syndicated on Nickelodeon, it uh, it blew up, and then it just now it's everywhere. You can find it every day of the week. 
Dude, how about Nickelodeon too? As far as like a production, you know, they they were always like my favorite uh, production besides besides Cartoon Network growing up. Like they were always, I don't know, they always kept my attention, especially when they had all that had, uh, and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> dude, what was the yeah, thing? Uh, <laughs> it was Slime Time Live. Do you remember that? Yeah. Yeah, the Keenan and Kel, had, um, you know. Oh man, all that Keenan and Kel, uh, the Amanda show. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then they started getting Drake and Josh. Nickelodeon you know? was good growing um, up. Um, what else? Do I... None, nobody out of that group ever Amanda went Bynes, too crazy. Amanda Bynes either, went kind of crazy. The child stars. Yeah, I know she did. She did went she? real crazy. But as far as like. When you look at, like, Disney and shit, I think they've had a lot of people that have been real weirdos, but. That's a good ratio, man. Like, for with Nickelodeon and Disney. I think something that we need to start looking at, though, is if we're, like, you were talking about the the kid that, or we were talking about the kid that won all that money streaming, you know, and now as a teenager, you can become, like, such an influencer. I think we also need to think about, like, the the effects that it has on their on their brains growing up, you know, as far as, like, their development, if they're... I'm not going to say if they're ready for all that because nobody is really ready for all that mentally prepared, but, like, that's something else that um, I think we should definitely, like, take in consideration, especially with, like, the kid gamers is, like, you know, nobody's really talking about the effects of becoming, a like, a big personality or, like, a the influencer online and, you know, all the pressure. Well, you look at it, I mean, like, that, child you know? stars, there's that stigma that they're, like, real weird, and I can understand why they grow up to be so different, but kind of with what you said with influencers, so if you're, like, 16 years old and you just got $3 million and you're a real piece of shit, you can uh, not give a fuck and be on Instagram, like, drinking and shit, and, <laughs> you know, like, you could be doing real bad things, and not really caring about the rep uh, the uh, repercussions from it, and what you're showing to, like, your audience, who is probably mostly young kids, not to say that that dude who's, who just won is gonna do that, but there's going to be people who are, like, you know, you, yeah, that, exactly, like, okay, little yeah, like, she does not deserve to have a platform to fucking mold kids' minds, but she does. And what's her name? Uh, Bad Baby, fucking Catch Me Outside Girl. Yeah. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, Daniel Bergoli. I mean, we're kind of going back because Whoa, Vicky isn't really relevant anymore. But at the time, like, I hated her because I'm like, she's like 16 or whatever she was, and you're showing these other little kids that you could be this way and be successful and it's like okay that's cool i really don't give a fuck if you made it just off being a piece of shit then that's what's up like i also know that some people have uh like they put up fronts like you know you play to your audience you're not exactly not you but it's a it's a a persona per se so I understand that someone could be real, yeah, like, absolutely. two chains, real fucking smart, but you wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't gather that from someone calling him titty boy on the street. So it's things like that, that, that make me try right. not to judge people so harshly like that. But I think when you're 15 and 16, if no one's that great of an actor like that, you know, when you're that young, you're not going to be a, like, you're really a piece of shit. So who knows, man? Like. Yeah, or you're you, being, you're being, right. Being like, it is going to be weird <laughs> in the future when all these kids are winning millions of dollars and you don't know what to do. Yeah, hey, let me tell you one. Like, I was just thinking about this the other day. I was doing some uh, some video work for the Honey's cheerleaders here, and they're like a professional dance team, right? And so I was like watching a bunch of dance videos just to kind of prepare for it. Um, and that is something that's just like stayed in the YouTube like heart and soul is just like is dance videos. You know what I mean? Like on YouTube, like that's that's how hip hop really, really started taking off was because of dance videos. And then everybody started uploading their dances and, you know, all that kind of all that kind of stuff. And it's crazy because 
Um, you got you still got these kid stars and stuff getting famous for dance, but like dance has always stayed pretty like heart and center of like like YouTube. It seems like especially um, when it comes to like getting views. Dude, that's one thing that I wish I could do is just fucking dance. <laughs> I can only just when but I'm. Do you hammered. know you can, or do you think you can? <laughs> so I think I can dance. I I think I can. <laughs> I always I don't know. It's pretty it's pretty easy to dance nowadays though. Honestly, you just kind of you tie all the viral dances together. And Man, the only thing I'll do dance, is you know? I could be I could be in the Maybe club. I'm gonna hit the whoa. <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> that's what my uh, that's what my brother always tried to tell me. He's a great dancer. He would always tell me just not to give a fuck. And I'm like, that's cool and all, but I cannot give a fuck doing the same move the whole time. I'm still gonna look stupid. Yeah, I mean, I went through a phase where I used to go into the bar. And I used to dance like crazy, like you know, I'll go into like the dance floor, like a pitcher in my hand, and just start dancing and not caring. And if you really do that, then it's kind of funny because, like, people who are, like, fun energy will just be, like, attracted to you. As long as you're not doing anything, like, out of the way, you know. Um, if you're just dancing and having a good time, a lot of times people will just join you on the dance floor. And then before you know it, everybody's Really, that is what happens around, a lot you know? of times, though, is, like, you realize that not a lot of other people can, per se, dance. So, it's not even, it's, man, just fucking get out there and do it, like. Like you said, just get out there and move around and fucking tie the dances together and you're not necessarily going to look great, but if you look like you're having a good time, then you're going to show other people that you're having a good time and that's what it's all about. Fuck being too cool to dance. Right. Now, shuffling, bro, now that shit, that, that is kind of hard. I've been practicing shuffling a little bit because when I go to my next festival, I'll probably go to uh, Huluween, but I want to be able to Every shuffle day, I'm shuffling. Time, you know what I mean? Shuffling's pretty is pretty cool. Yeah, man. And that that went viral. Remember how viral like that went with the man, me with all and the YouTube videos? My cousin were out in the backyard at three o'clock in the morning one time trying to fucking shuffle. Like we would we looked up YouTube video after YouTube video and he got it. He, he there used to be a there Yeah, I, I did. He got it. <laughs> I got I got like two steps. <laughs> That's it. But there was, a, there was one, it was called the SpongeBob. Yeah. And it was a move that you could do shuffling. And he started doing that shit, and he got real good at it. I was like, damn, bro, you're good. I'm just going to go back inside and eat this food now. <laughs> Dude, I actually got a domain, like, based off of the whole, like, dancing thing. It's called Dance for the DJ. So, eventually, I want to have a EDM publication and go around and feature all these different dancers that i don't I know have, have you not. ever been to a music festival it's a tragedy all right well dude you get we you, you gotta go to a music fest. it's pretty crazy all right so you got the crowd of people and that's like all seeing you know whoever's playing and then you got these people on the front that are on the rail or whatever and they're just damn near a head like they're headbutting the rail pretty much like head banging but then usually off to the side where it's a little bit more sporadic You'll see Drums. all these people like doing these. Uh, Ill- <laughs> no, that's that's in the tents in the crowd, but uh, they'll be dancing. But it'll be everything from shuffling to like uh, to hooping, and then they'll have like the little orbs where they're doing crazy stuff with it. Then you got the people um, that might be what, what is the thing like fucking around with the staff, and then you got people doing light shows. And light shows is something super cool. It's like in the EDM scene, though. It's like uh, kind of like tutting, what, if you know what that is, with your hands, but with your fingers. And a lot of times there's lights on them, and they'll just be super trippy. But I want to like start to uh, show off those type of people too, and like connect them with the with DJs and bands. I think that'd be really cool as a publication called Dance, Dance for, for the, the DJ. DJ. I feel it, man. That is a dope idea. Um, I definitely, you know, have to make a music festival soon. It's it's on my list. I I I've, I've, I think I got to get over the fact that like a lot of the people I'm gonna see I don't know because I'm not necessarily huge into EDM. Um, yeah, neither but, am I. You know, bro. I appreciate I. it and it gets me hype, especially when I'm in the right uh, state of mind. So that'll be fun for sure. <laughs> I, I want to go to Voodoo, bro. Well, it's like yeah, Force uh, Voodoo Force is going. I know they yeah, went New last Orleans. year and. I think uh, 
I think that might be the one this year. Around October too, so the weather's should be pretty nice and just sounds like a good one for me. Yeah, I'll be going like I said, Yeah, I'll be going to Halloween like the only reason I'm going to like any type of festival is honestly because I like a lot of hip hop. I'm not really a huge fan of EDM. I like some stuff like Grizz and you know like it's like some some jam stuff, you know. But um the biggest thing is like I'll go if I'm there for like publication stuff. So like I went to Electric Forest because like I was able I was going there to do like work and do like video. I was like, "Oh, this is pretty cool." But I didn't know any of the artists, you know, at all. So we were like just chilling um backstage and I'm just like, "Well, I don't know who these people are, but they're going on and coming off and, you know, I can only go up there for a certain amount of time." And it's just like it kind of sucks cuz you kind of wish you knew the culture a little bit more, but at the same time like I, I wasn't fanboying or anything like that because fangirling, whatever you want to call it, over, you know, artists. But I don't know. It's definitely an experience. The people there are super, super chill, very accepting of everybody. Um, the biggest part is when you feel the music, though, man. If you're in the crowd and you got the and they got the music going, man, that that's just something you cannot like. you have to experience that. Like when I was there, I was like, ah, oh, this is why people love festivals. And I was like. I, I can understand it now. It's still not my jam, but like I definitely understand uh, where where people can love going to these festivals, especially like getting lost and just like meeting new people. Like that was another really cool thing. It's just all the different types of people you could just run into there that all had like yeah, and you expect everybody to be in their uh, in a good state of mind, like good uh, good feelings, good vibes all around, like. I go to a music festival i'm expecting people to be pretty friendly and i mean you know there's assholes everywhere but for the most part i'm assuming most people's festival experiences uh if you make it if you make it uh the, make the most out of it and be you know kind to others i'm sure most people are pretty cool to each other out there yeah dude they even had like a another pretty crazy part was at night, like, there's different sections of camping, right? I, this was at Electric Forest. So there's, like, group camping. If you go as a group and have a bunch of people, which we did, um, you have, like, your general admissions. And then there was, like, another spot for, like, RVs, right? Well, all the artists uh, would go and, like, play on top of these RVs, like, at 2 o'clock in the morning. Like, these secret, like, parties or these secret sets that they would just come out and, like, play some new shit they haven't released. And that stuff, man, that was that was like another pretty cool little part about it. Just being able to walk around and being like, oh, shit, that was an artist we just saw, but the secret like, they're at a party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. And the police were pretty cool, too. They didn't really fuck with anybody. As as long as you weren't passing out and, you know. <laughs> I saw this one uh, story. Might have been a meme, but this guy, like, buried this bottle of vodka and he had like mapped out coordinates and he buried it where he knew that the festival was going to be and then he just went and dug it up after he got in the festival <coughs> sounds like the yeah. smartest thing to do ever that's the move i would i would i would <laughs> i wouldn't have hit liquor he probably i would have hit something else but <laughs> he liquor he's like yeah man I, I found my liquor bottle full of acid um so, you know, we're getting to, I'm looking, I'm looking yeah. right now and, uh, it's July 30th. So Cam, we're getting so close to like the end of summer. It's almost here. I mean, August, you know, we got this whole month and then summer doesn't officially end until I think the 22nd, I think is when fall starts of September, but it's going to be gone before you know it. Mm. And so I think. A good way to kind of wrap this podcast episode out is what we prepared. We're going to call this, uh, we'll just call this the list. So what we were thinking, right? So it's summertime. You know, you'll go out to a nice little summer barbecue. We want to give y'all our ideal summer barbecue. All right. So we're going to give you three little either artists or songs each you know ideally it, you'd have a playlist but we're just going to give you like our bangers that you got to have playing at the cookout and then 
after the music, you know, you got to cap it off or, or you got to go to the food. So we're going to give you four each of our essential barbecue foods, like the shit you got to have when you're at the cookout. And then finally, you know, you get done with a little summer hangout with, with your homies. You know, you might have some girls over there or vice versa. You hang out with your girls. You got some dudes over there. You want to throw on a movie at the end. So we're going to give you our, our, our personal movie to cap off the cookout. All right, so Cam, you gotta put on you gotta put on the stereo. You know, you press play. What's the first song or artist that's gonna play at your barbecue party? At my barbecue party, honestly, man, some Jimi Hendrix. Uh, I'm gonna put on like man, now, I, the Jimi Hendrix experience. I gotta change uh, one of my songs gonna... <laughs> now, though, because I straight up had Purple Haze on this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Everything Jimmy, man. Honestly, Purple Haze, Fire, uh, Voodoo Child is my. Did you get my Snapchat? I sent you the other day, uh, playing um, Voodoo Child in the background. Uh, I might have got it, bro. I did not have heard it, bro. I'm, I'm not even. I'm hardly on Snapchat. I'm on. I'm on Instagram. I, I, honestly, you. That's like uh, you have a MMA fight in your uh, in your lifetime, correct? Is it just one? And I saw a video yeah. from it. Yeah, I just one. And I don't, I don't remember if you told me or if I saw you come out, but I, I know it was the Voodoo Child, right? Yeah, man, it was the Voodoo that's Child. Some that's Hulk my, Hogan that's shit, my song bro. Right I've there. Ever been like, oh my god, Hulk Hogan's coming out to fight. There's this, uh, there's this <laughs> Hannibal Burris. Uh, he, he had a stand up, and this I've had this feeling, right? So in the stand up. He was like, yeah, man, when I was growing up watching uh, wrestling, Hulk Hogan would come out, and I used to think, oh, man, it's cool that Hulk Hogan let that unknown artist uh, be his theme song, you know, and he's talking about Voodoo Child, and I had that exact same feeling when I was growing up, like, (laughs) my dad is huge into wrestling, so when I was growing up, I was watching Hulk Hogan, and Voodoo Child, to me, was the Hulk Hogan theme song, so, you know, and I wasn't very old at all when I thought that. So when I even got a little older, but I'm still that old, but I start listening to Jimmy, I'm like, oh my God. Hulk Hogan's lucky that he got to come out to Jimi Hendrix. Like, what? Yeah, man. I, Jimmy, I'm very connected to Jimmy. My very, I don't know. I, I love I love all the, all this stuff, especially back when I used to play guitar. I used to play a lot of his, uh, or attempt to try to play a lot of his songs, I should say. <laughs> But so we got J- Jimi Hendrix. Um, I like to play a lot of albums when I like to play artists, um, or just do a mix of it. So Jimi Hendrix, I really like John Bellion. He's been like a, a new favorite of mine. Really easy, really good li- listening music. Um, it has everything between like pop to R and B to to rap to you know all different types of genres, and it. it's kind of hard to explain like what his genre is. And then um, J Cole, I just uh, I like all his stuff, so really it would be like a playlist of those three artists uh, combined together. I think would you know that'd probably be on my playlist. Nothing too crazy, nothing too crazy hype, but you know it's definitely really vibey. Really wavy, wavy is a dope word. I like saying that. Shouts out to uh, Max B <laughs> and Kanye West for that. With my music, I went three specific songs. All right, so. I don't necessarily, these wouldn't be songs that you would start off playing on the stereo, I don't think. But once these, once, you know, a couple songs been playing in the background, you're, you're all there chilling, sipping on your drinks, and then these three songs come on, each three of them are going to get a reaction. All right. So the first one that's going to come on, and I'm going to try to appeal to a lot of people because I got a lot of different friends, you know, our friend group. Our friend group, when you were here, super diverse, and I mean, you know, it's just always like that. So, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have something for everybody. So, yeah. First, oh, country. No. Probably gonna have some I'm country. not gonna have country. <laughs> so, to substitute the country for the white people, I'm gonna have Mr. Brightside playing. Okay, started off nice. Like okay. everybody likes Mr. Brightside. Uh, one of my closest friends that. Uh, he plays that song every time that uh, I've ever been to any establishment with a jukebox with him. He will play that song every time. So, 
<laughs> I, I I know what type of reaction it gets from not just him, but everybody whenever that comes on. So, secondly, after that one goes off, you're going to hear Get Your Freak On by Missy Elliott. All right. And you know how that song starts <laughs> off, right? Yeah. Like the... Dar, 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 right. Dar, you can't... You, even if you think uh-huh. that song's corny, which if you do, you're fucking wrong. And I don't know how you could ever think that, but you're going to move to it. You know, it's, it's going to come on, you're going to move to it. <laughs> and to end out all that, I like to end on a high note. You know, if I was if I was in a band, I would play my best, most hyped song as the encore. I want you to leave hype as fuck. So I'm going to play Bombs Over Baghdad by Outkast. Okay. So my cookout, yeah, like, you know, there's going to be new songs (laughs) sprinkled in in the playlist. Like I said, it's not going to be those three back to back to back. But when them three come on, it's going to get a reaction from people. And Bombs Over Baghdad, I I don't care where you're at. If that thing comes on, the energy in the room just expands, bro. Changes. Yeah, man. Dude, that was a very, I remember uh, the very first time I went down to Panama City and uh it was the very first time i could ever get into like a bar la vila it was uh me demarcus hey right yeah man we went to la vila and we went to sharkies and i remember when they started playing uh bombs over baghdad in sharkies bro the place started going off like it was it was it was pretty it was pretty crazy because like it was my first like big club or not even club yeah i guess big club experience but it was just my first time seeing like energy like that, especially being like spring break. Time of your in life, Panama right City, there, bro. You know what I mean? Um, just for you to yeah, re- like bro, remember definitely. that exact moment. So yeah. I think <laughs> with our tunes, we gonna have the party bumping. So we gotta have the good food though. And like I said, pick four essential foods that you have to have like if you pull up to a barbecue and they ain't got it you're not even really fucking with the plates like what do you gotta have all right so of course you gotta have some type of meat i mean i like a good hamburger as long as they know how to cook cook the hamburger you know what i'm saying um that's really the big biggest part is who's on the grill um, especially at a cookout, you know that is a very that's a very big responsibility. A lot of people think a, party, a lot of people know, think you got to check the I, shoes, <laughs> but I say I I say check the socks. Yeah, <laughs> if the socks are high, <laughs> there is no doubt that you're about to feast. Now you can have you can have like ankle socks and still throw down. If they're no show socks, I don't care if you got on New Balances, bro. Like your meat's gonna be burnt. <laughs> yeah, ain't got that. They got that. Uh, that so we got, we got, we got some boygas. But yeah, man. So a hamburger. <laughs> Definitely got the burgers. Uh, you got to have a good mac and cheese. I'm, I, I like a good mac and cheese at a, at a barbecue, man. Um, it's got to be solid. Also, the thing to me that I'll make a, or break a plate uh, at the cookout would definitely be like some potato salad. Like it's got to be, it's got to be hitting potato salad. It can't be, you know, some of it's like the straight like white potato salad, and some's like the really yellow, you know. I, I like the yellow one a little bit better, but I guess the less mayonnaise would be the big thing. Less mayonnaise in it better, but the potato salad is definitely that tells me if you really know what you're talking about, because you know if they're if they're hot, nobody really likes hot potato salad. You know, if somebody keeps it cold to complement that burger, it's just like ugh. Everything in one. Um, and then we got three. So mac cheese, uh, potato salad, hamburger, and then also, to end it, sweet potato pie. Uh, sweet potato pie or pumpkin pie. Uh, and my family, whenever we have a cookout, like that is the staple dessert. You know what I mean? Um, you got you to gotta finish up with a good dessert. But all these things, to me, don't mean shit if you don't hey, have good true sweet that. tea. You know, so to me, you, you got you got you got to have the banging sweet tea. Like that's that's gonna be that's gonna be your that's gonna see. Be that's your why we're in this together right because there. I totally <laughs> forgot the drinks, bro. But you got me. I totally forgot the drinks. If it was up to me, we wouldn't have nothing. <laughs> so 
So what, what's, what's your choice? So with bro? me, what so I did, I kind of did like you. I'm, I'm gonna go with a meat and uh, a meat and three, if you will. I'm gonna give you. I gotta get some ribs, bro. Ribs, to me, like I, I love them. A nice, a nice cooked rack, like falling off the bone, with some barbecue sauce on it, like with a li- little burnt, little burnt sauce. But you know. The, the right person knows how to cook some good ribs. If, just make them tender enough, juicy enough, but a little bit crispy on the outside. That's when the ribs are good. So, a lot of the stuff that I thought of, you kind of did too. So, I, I put down more than four, but I narrowed it down to four. But now, you got me on the potato salad. Alright? That would have been one of mine, but you got me on that. So, I'm going to bring the coleslaw. And you know, a lot of people, a lot of people hate on coleslaw, and I, I don't understand it. I think it's a great compliment, kind of like would you. What kind of coleslaw, though? What kind of coleslaw? Because well, there's so many t- different types of coleslaw. You know the kind you get from like KFC. Yeah, like the small. Yeah, maybe like even a little bit more coleslaw. chopped than that. Maybe a little bit that has more consistency to it than the KFC one. I think you know what I'm talking about. None of the, none yeah. of that weird coleslaw that you get from yeah. like uh, um, uh, <sighs> McAllisters. I don't know if you ever go to McAllisters, but they have they got that nasty like sauerkraut looking coleslaw. Like, none of that, like the green shit, the good yeah. the good coleslaw. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the one that All has right, like so, that sauce. So on we it. got yeah. ribs, coleslaw, uh, baked beans. I think you gotta have some good some good baked beans with a little bit of meat in it. Uh, because what I like to do is, yeah. and you're exactly right when you say with the potato salad, like cold potato salad, take your hot baked beans and mix it in with your cold potato salad, like each uh, spoonful. Bro, not mix like it. not not mix like put it in a bowl and fucking no. mix it with your spoon. <laughs> oh, <I'm sorry. laughs> my bad. I was like, like damn, what that is this guy talking white about? White people shit is crazy at their cookouts. <laughs> what are they <laughs> mixing baked beans and potato salad? <laughs> No, but all right. So take a take a right. you know a little scoop of baked beans in your in your spoon, and then keep gliding along your plate. Grab a little bit of potato salad and eat it at the same time. Don't take it and mix it in again, bro. I'm, Cam, you laughing? But you gonna try this shit and you gonna like it? I'm telling y'all. Maybe little, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm telling y'all. All right. <laughs> Try. I'll try. I'll try, man. I'll try. I've 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 had shitlands, so you know, not 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 much is. But worse I'm saying, than you know, a lot so of pla- anything, a lot of places man. where you're gonna have baked beans, there's gonna be some coleslaw or uh, some potato salad available. So you definitely should try it. And with that, now I feel like a fucking monster for mixing baked beans and potato salad. <laughs> 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 I'm a. Uh, <laughs> I'm good, man. Yeah, I, 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 I got to go with you, and there's got to be a little bit of dessert to it, and I, I don't know the. I'm, I'm trying to think of a, a, of a best barbecue dessert, and I really can't. Like honestly, I had banana cream banana pie, cream is, pie good. is pretty good. Man. I was thinking fucking cheesecake, just because that's me. But I don't Ooh. know if that's too much, you know. Like yeah. you just ate a lot, so. Feel like the the dessert's got to be something uh, a little less filling. Like, all right, so I put ribs, coleslaw, baked beans, and potato yeah. salad. So I don't. I would like to come up with another one to add, but uh, you know, I think I think we got we got the the, the plate pretty good and full. You know, we, we pretty much hit everything that we need to. Anything else is just gonna be overkill. So, all right, the night's ending, yeah. right? And we gotta pick a movie to put on. Right, we're all chilling. We uh, we got the big projector outside. The sun's going down. You know, the pool's still there, but we want to put on a movie and watch it. And so, what we did was we chose three movies, right? But because you know, you gotta have you gotta have a yeah. vote. Like, you can't just say, "Hey, let's watch this movie." You gotta be like, "Yo, guys, out of these movies, which ones do y'all want to watch?" So, I got my three. You got your three. I think we should go back to back to back. So, 
I'll give you one, you give me one, and then at the end, we'll pick one for each other that we'll watch. So my first one, and I don't necessarily know if this is going to be the one you're going to pick, and when I'm coming up with these movies, I'm thinking of it as a party setting. You know, I want everybody to chill, have a good time, and pick a movie that I think everybody's seen and has fond memories of. So, my first movie that I'm going to go with is Project X. Ah. Uh, you know, class, classic that's party that's movie, movie for our generation. Yeah. Uh, I think <laughs> after that movie came out, I got invited to uh, about 50 Project A through Z parties after that. Yeah, man. Yeah, I remember, like, the, the night I was leaving to go to boot camp was, like, the night of the biggest, like, it was Project Z or whatever, I believe, that they, they were saying. This was, like, 20, yeah, 2012. So, this was right after that movie had come out. And, like, I was just chilling in my hotel, uh, waiting on the bus or whatever, and just looking at all these snaps and, like, Instagram stuff from, like, some of the parties. And some of them were, like, they weren't shit, but other ones was, like, I really oh think gosh, I was at like, the one what? that you're talking about. Because <laughs> it was at... With, like, all the... Where the police showed up, but they couldn't I mean, really I was do at nothing. A lot so of parties kind of that happened, but <clears throat> I know that there was yeah. a big <laughs> one in 2012 that a lot of people went to that uh, were in our kind of like friend circle. So I'm pretty sure it's probably the same one. And I don't remember much about that night, yeah. but I remember it was a good time. So what? Uh, what? What's your first suggestion on your side of the movies? All right, so I like something that I guess will be a little bit more relatable to everybody, you know. Um, probably just got done eating. We're all chilling. Probably a little drinking maybe going on, a little smoking going on, so everybody's in a good mood, you know. Um, I would definitely say Kid Cannabis, man. That is a good – I think that's a really good movie to put on. Um, it's a, It's kind of a movie that not a lot of people have heard about. But it's about this kid, this little nerdy kid, and uh, he finds out how unprotected the border is between Canada and America. And then starts I have never heard of that movie, so, but it sounds dope. Really, I'm going to definitely check up on it. <laughs> when did it come out? Like, is it kind of older? Or? I want to say it came out in like 2000. Let me check it up real quick. I want to say it came out 2003, maybe. Uh, no, I was no, like, that is a old movie, camera. <laughs> <laughs> My bad, 2014, yeah. Only off so by 21 high school years. school dropout and his 27-year-old friends. <laughs> no big deal, man, you know. It's all, it's all the same. <laughs> but, yeah, man, Kid Cannabis. So, it has... Uh, who's the who's the guy in Sons of Anarchy? The dude with the white uh, hair. Ron Perlman. The old guy. Okay, yeah, I think I know what you're movie. talking about. I mean, not enough to like tell you the plot or anything, but I think I've seen images of that. Yeah, Ron Perlman, Kenny Worm Wormold or something like that. But yeah, Ron Perlman's the, definitely the biggest biggest name. I think it's based off a true story too. So I, mean, I like fair a lot enough. of drug movies. So <laughs> there's, we're gonna have to see if there's people at the party who are willing to experiment, or. After you reveal the rest of your list, I, I don't. We'll, we'll see how they're feeling. So, hey man, got to give them some culture next. So oh, with my ahead. next one, <laughs> like I said, I I basically just went with three movies that I was pretty sure that people that we would be at parties with would know. So my second one is going to be an old classic, Friday. Because most, most of the times when you're at the cookout, it's on the weekend, you know, probably a Saturday. Uh, for some reason, man, you're just in a, you're in that mode when, when it's the weekend. You just, your body knows it's the weekend, you know. So when you're, when you're watching Friday on a Friday or a Saturday, you're so much more in tune with that movie. And, I mean, it's a classic. I mean, who doesn't know, like, by Felicia and, and, and just... Pretty much every minute of that movie now is just so iconic that I think everybody has at least seen it. And I think uh, that yeah. might be one for the cookout. I know I saw that movie. That was probably the first 
like movie like that that I had seen. You know, I remember watching it with my sister, and I had seen. You know, you walk like I, I I'm the youngest of four kids, so there's plenty of times where I walked into people's rooms and shit, and there's stuff on TV that I really couldn't watch. You know, my brothers and sisters would let me watch it as much as they could, but. You know, I couldn't just uh, yeah. sit down and watch a, a full movie for the most part. That was that was like Friday when I was younger. And so when I finally was able to like, you know, convince my older sister to let me watch that, I remember watching it and being just opened up a whole new part of my brain as far as like where comedy could take you. Yeah, dude, I, I would agree with that, man. That's a pretty good movie. Um I definitely got to bring the culture, though, with the next one, because not everybody's seen this, but this has some iconic people. Bruh. In it. It's Shadas. Bruh. 2002. You said something with that one, dog. That movie. Classic. Oh, my God. I remember watching that. Got Khaled in it. Wyclef John. And it has what? the Who's the Marley in it? Um... Oh, dang. It has a Mar- that, one of the Marleys. One of the Marleys. That movie will fuck like you up, bro. But it's a, it's, it's a, bro, that's like an iconic movie, you know what I mean? Dude, it's rated, do you know what, I just looked it up, on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, do you know I don't rated? know, but you're probably going to make me mad when you tell me. Oh my 19%. god. But on Google, like it says, Google users, 93% like the movie. So obviously a lot of people like the movie. The budget was 200000 That's a great like, movie what? in the same vein as like, um... What's the movie with Mackay Pfeiffer? Um, there's a lot of uh, betrayal in it. There's the three guys. Um, oh my god! You're not talking about no. C- you're not talking about movie, City of God, are you? It's got Mac- uh, It's got that's, I like that Mackay Pfeiffer though. in it. That's like the and uh, go ahead. He's like he's like. Uh, Painful. Yeah, Shot is just kind of ah, like painful yeah, man. to me. Yeah. And uh, Juice and, and movies like that. Yeah, man, painful. exactly. It's all came out Painful is a good movie, that too. That shit period. will fuck you up as well. Training day. Agreed. So, what, so what's, what's the next the movie? The last one. Out? And honestly, if I had to pick. Between these three, for me, this is what I'm gonna pick because I think it. I think it's just a classic. It's probably my. I don't know. I'd have to sit and sit and think about it if it's like my favorite of all time. But it's definitely one of my top five favorite comedies of all time. It's just a great movie, man. Super bad. Yeah. So I mean, really, <laughs> yeah. not much to be said about it. I'm sure everybody who's listened to this have seen it, and it is iconic it's i watched that movie a million times in high school i was the perfect age for it you know like when you're when you're the right age for something it can just hit so differently yeah you you could even be a couple years removed from it and like not realize how much you're not associating with it as much as you would have if you were like exactly the age that it was meant for yeah that same age yeah, Seth Rogen, Jonah Hill, bro, like this and I mean all those Emma people Stone. like they kept it going too with movies afterwards with like uh, uh, This Is the End yeah. and Pineapple Express and <clears throat> dude, all this Seth Rogen is such an underrated <laughs> uh, just entertainer in in our day and age. He writes a lot. I know he has a partner that helps him a lot, but just that little group. With all those people, I'm so glad they stay around enough for more movies. You know, Danny McBride and, and all those people that uh, James Franco. I don't. James Franco went in super bad. I don't think, yeah. but super bad was just fucking great, bro. Like no. the period blood scene, iconic. The damn McLovin. <laughs> like, so many things yes. came from there. Yes. Who who doesn't? Right. Still quote it sometimes, you know. So, yeah, dude. I see. I was I was gonna end on something kind of like a comedy as well, 
Um, since he has super bad, I was gonna look at the Hangover. I love. I the swear to God, I got it on my list too, bro. Like okay. it's 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 written off to the side. That was it was between that and uh, uh Project X. I try. Yeah, I, to me it was either Hangover or nope. Guava Island. You ever heard of Guava Island? It's all right. So it's it's on Netflix right now, but it's the movie that. Uh, you know, this is America. Oh yeah, yeah, like I the, know what you're talking about. You're talking about video. the childish Gambino shit, yeah. With childish, yeah, yeah, childish Gambino's in it. Rihanna's in it. Rihanna's the uh, the other main character, so you know, that's that's a really I don't know. I really enjoyed watching that movie, and it's short, so it's not like you'd be keeping people at the at the barbecue all night watching a movie. Uh, you know, it's about forty minutes, so they can they can watch. Honestly, it if you presented me all. your <laughs> your three options. I'm gonna go with the Guava Island because I, now that I know what you're talking about, I do want to see that. And you're right, it's not long, and that's kind of a nice little cap off, you know. I know, I uh, <clears throat> now that I know, like I said, yeah. know, know what you're talking about. It's it's kind of like a, uh, from what I've gathered, it's kind of like a real vacationy type movie, you know, like on a beach type shit. Well, it's, it is, but it's not. So I'll just kind of give you a little bit of a rundown about it. I'm not going to give away what it is. Um, essentially, it's about this artist who is on this island that is run by uh, the way they support their economy is by factories. So everybody wants to see him um, play, essentially. And that's what the movie's about is like his rise in like a, a town that doesn't want the people to... Take, like, so when you say him, you mean Donald place. Glover? Um, I guess that. Yeah, man. Yeah. So Donald Glover is uh, performing the whole time, and you know, it's 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 something unique. It's definitely something interesting. Um, kept my attention. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Uh, uh, we here. saw Childish Gambino last September, and it was a great show, bro. We saw what Race Trimmered opened, and Childish Gambino was the main act. And the only thing that sucked was we were in a place. That had we were all, we had floor seats. Actually, we didn't. So we finessed floor seats, and uh, there were actual seats on the floor, like assigned seats, like still on the floor. So, so it kind of sucks because yeah. you know when I'm at a concert, I'm letting loose. I'm fucking jumping up and down. I'm getting wild with it, and you couldn't really do that. But as far as like. Childish Gambino's performance, it was great. He was very good. Um, great, dope concert. The only thing that sucked, man, that was the same night Mac Miller died. Yeah, we, uh, oh, was it? Me, Damn. And, me and the homie foe had a great night in Atlanta. Crazy, we were even like listening to Mac Miller that night, um, doing a whole bunch of stupid shit. Just basically, just kind of, uh, being some hooligans but not really but you know kind of away from everybody and so that night happens and then the next day we we were back in montgomery and that's when a uh, foe hit me with the news that mac had died and it was crazy but just to know that there's like all that was happening at the same time that me and foe were living our best life so uh, that was a real crazy crazy yeah. night but <laughs> gambino was great so i would definitely uh go back to see him i don't know if i'd pay 150 to see him again because that was a lot of money for because like i said we didn't have floor seats so those were more yeah. so how'd y'all finesse the my floor sister seats? had tickets on the floor and then my brother had tickets on the floor and my sister was sitting in the front my brother was sitting in the back my brother didn't go he sold his tickets to someone else but to get on the floor you show them your ticket and then they give you a wristband all right, so I got my sister to send me the email of her tickets, and I got my brother to send me the email of his tickets. And when we went down to the floor, we showed them the ticket on the phone because you could go up and down the stairs. You could leave the floor and just show them your ticket and come back. So there's no – yeah, there's yeah, no way that they, they can know that this ticket it. hasn't been used. So luckily, we found seats in front of where my sister was really sitting that were empty, and nobody came. But if they did, we were just going to show them the tickets for my brother, who was supposed to be sitting further in the back, and we would have just went back there. 
and then if we if we got caught back there we were just going to show them the yeah. tickets for the front and just go back to the front so we just kind of had a whole little system planned i mean it, it it took a lot because like we had to have my sister having tickets and my brother having tickets for us to be able to pull that off but we definitely uh made the most of what we had and we were up at, we were up in the top balcony when ray schremer was playing and the whole time we were just like fuck i want to be on the floor and we said fuck it let's make it happen yeah man nice hell yeah man the my only ever like experience like that was uh at john bellion just recently um at, it was like outside or whatever but i went with uh holly and we had gone to uh we had like floor seats or floor like floor it was like standing room only or whatever for the the floor or whatever like to be in the very front but then we were just like yo all these people around us me personally i'm not a big fan of a lot of people being around me um i, I don't care about being in the mix i just want to hear what they sound like live uh so we just saw like this spot over at the vip and it was like seats and you could have like food taken tea and everything and we were just like hey are these people showing up and they didn't show they <laughs> and they didn't show up and um we just got to get vip for like 40 bucks and like we had people bringing us food at the concert we had our own like dedicated space we had drinks being brought out to us you know like that's a whole that's like a i i for now on like i <laughs> definitely want to go vip if i go someplace because like they definitely wait on you. It's just, man. I'm not Isn't that awesome? That's that dope that you money. like saw that opportunity and took that advantage. <laughs> I have to. Uh, oh yeah. Thank my brother for like my um, uh, event skills like that. Like you know, if you see a seat, fucking take it. If someone comes and tells you that it's theirs, then all right, get up. You tried. I remember we went to a Auburn basketball game. Yeah. You know I mean. Roll Tide, but we went to that basketball game and we were supposed to be sitting in the second deck and we ended up sitting like the f second row from the tunnel. So, uh. bro, Auburn's VIP is like their their stuff. For I their didn't mean to bring up Auburn. Insane, All right, so we're gonna bro. end the podcast right here. <laughs> No, but I had a lot of fun at the basketball game, bro. I'm not going front. That was like Bruce Pearl's first year. And so I actually saw some people who just went to the Final Four. They lost, but they went there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, they lost. But, but bro, all right, so in the VIP thing, they, they mark your hand with, like, this UV uh, stamp on your hand so you can leave and enter that way, right? They just shot a blue light on your hand. But we – I was going with uh, – with some people from my church or whatever, um, I think my Sunday school teacher, and um, you could get, like, it was just, like, all you could eat food, but they had different types of foods and all you could drink as well. Um, but they had, like, Chick-fil-A to, like, catered food to, like, home-cooked food, like, there. And, like, that was your three options, and you could just keep getting as much food as you want. You could drink as much as you want. You could leave and go back and forth. And, like, the seats were right behind the, the damn, um, like, the actual, or the... The place to eat was actually right behind where all the seats were. So it was like five minutes away. Or not five minutes away, like five seconds away, I should say. It was just, it was super nice. Like, oh, I haven't been to an Auburn basketball game since, but, you know, we're down. Yeah, cool story, bro. So, um, <laughs> nah, man, but that is cool. Like, I, I love uh, good experiences like that, like in, in uh, fun little events. It is cool to get, um... A, a VIP type of experience every now and then. Like, if you've ever been to, like, a Biscuits game and, like, I don't know, you just got chosen to... The for those of you who don't know, the <laughs> Montgomery Biscuits is the real name of the baseball team in Montgomery. And they do a lot of cool stuff there, and I know that there's a lot of people that they, uh, like, give, like, free VIP tickets to and shit and sweet tickets and stuff like that, so... I don't know where I was going with that thought necessarily, but VIP is cool. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, Evan, Long yeah. Evan Longoria went through the biscuits, man. We have like a we have like a, a saying pro team here. It's kind of funny because um, the last part a little about baseball or whatever, but there are the farm team. Montgomery Biscuits are the farm team to the Rays, but also. 
the Durham Bulls, which are in Durham, North Carolina, I believe, are also a farm team. The only reason I know this is because I played uh, MLB The Show, and I would always play on the Rays, so I would play for the Biscuits, and I would always start off on the Durham Bulls. So, it's funny that you say that. Um, David Price, I know at one point, (laughs) was the highest paid pitcher in the MLB. He came from the Biscuits, BJ Upton, Justin Upton. I know there's a lot of people who are like, who the fuck are you talking about? Because those are, at this point, old baseball players, and I don't even watch baseball, (laughs) really. Baseball is boring to watch on TV, but if you're there, it's fun, and if you're playing, it's it's fun. I used to always enjoy playing. I say that I played for a year, but, dude, I played for a year, and I started off in like ninth grade and kids were already throwing like I don't want to say 80s and be like completely out of range but I'm sure they were throwing above 70s no you you're you're pretty yeah man yeah the first time that ball like whipped past me and I can hear it uh that was I was like I'm a butt that's all I did (laughs) yeah man I played baseball like Ever since I was little, like, I played travel. I, I used to, like, take it pretty serious until I got to high school, really. And then it was like, hey, you need to focus on the sport. And then curveballs started coming at my head at, like, 80 miles an hour. I was just like, you know what? I'm good. I'd, I'd rather not sit here and, you know, try to hit this thing and hope it doesn't hit me. I'd rather just go and hit somebody on a football field. So That was the best, bro. Kind of football practices were so fun because <laughs> you just get to be pissed off all day during school and then you just get to go hit people. It depends on what team you played for, man. Because um, I played on a team that was super good, and we won. Like we went undefeated for like three years, and didn't and get scored on for, for like, two of those three years. But yeah. then, yeah, then I played for Evangel, <laughs> and it was a That's good how, season uh, if we won two games. Hooper was. <laughs> uh, the homeschool Evangel team was fun, but we played a uh, eight man football, which was really weird. And then, yeah. Dude, we would play. We played like twelve. Like I remember our JV team. We had twelve people on our team, and it ta- we had to dress eleven. So everybody was playing both ways with one sub. Like that shit was crazy. And we went six and two that year in JV. But you know, at we all, cared about JV, except so. for the JV players, <laughs> and then they get to be varsity players. And we're like, fuck JV. Right. So high school sports really were hard, mean? bro. Basketball. Was- Fun, I, think, I think basketball is the funnest to play, like, just pick up, and everybody could just, you know, play a pickup game. Football, I think I'm, like, I understand football the best out of all the sports that I like, so I'm probably, like, best at it in terms of being, like, a, a football mind. Like, uh, Madden just came out, and I've been playing that all day, and uh, it... It's it's a real good version this year, but it makes me realize like how much more I know about football than basketball and and soccer. Like if you, if I try to play FIFA, I'll yeah. I'll score because I had good stick skills, not because I set up a play and saw it through for like six passes and it worked. No, it's because like I did two passes, someone fucked up, and then I just happened to like go to the defense and score. But on Madden I can just I can pick yeah. apart on defense. But I think Dude no, I, I don't know yeah. where I was going. I'm glad you said something. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah man, I I don't know. With with games, I was always a two K guy. Um Madden was I you know, I I was okay at but I get destroyed. I love FIFA. FIFA is probably my favorite sports game to play besides 2K. But I just get destroyed on FIFA so much. Like, I forgot who it was. Like, when we were at the apartment, used to play games. Probably Forrest, man. Um, probably destroyed me in, in FIFA. I, I remember talking back. It was either him or, like, Curtis. Uh, but I, I would always want to try to play, like, FIFA, and I always got destroyed. But it's like. People trying to set up something in FIFA to me. I'm just it's like, how are you doing that? <laughs> it was definitely how Forrest are these plays probably working? because I played Curtis a lot and beat Curtis a lot. And Forrest, me and Forrest were, Forrest was a better than me at FIFA. So I would assume that it was Forrest. 
I would say, you know, I mean, I'm going to say it, I'm the greatest Madden player of all time, but I know that you saw one game in particular of me where I lost like a hundred to nothing because I was, because I was, because I was drunk as shit. <laughs> I forgot and I about kept that. doing the same one play uh-huh. every time. Dude, it was, it was a uh, Trevor. Trevor beat me like a hundred to nothing. And I think I was talking shit the whole time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you oh, were. bro. <laughs> Get your ass whooped, Thank but it was there funny. Was no video of that. But, when I'm in a sober mind, the goat, boy. Know that. Well, shit, bro. I think, you know, we're getting past around a minute. Uh, a minute. See, this we know it's getting late. We're getting a, a little bit past an hour and a half. Uh, we're kind of recording a little late, so I know. I'm tired. I know you're probably getting there. And with that... We'll probably go on and uh, and end this episode. I think it was a good one. You know, we uh, got what we needed to get out at the beginning of the episode. We kind of had like a nice little topic. I hope you all enjoyed the barbecue talk. That was just kind of something that we had talked about before. Just to kind of have a little bit of a, of a, not a filler segment, but you know, we got a good couple conversations out of that as well. And like we say, you know, it's just all about the conversation here and basically want you guys to feel like we're just in the room and we're all chilling and talking and i think that's why we want to get you guys on here with us so y'all can uh have that feeling as well because it's real fun man like i love doing these podcasts with you bros it, it's therapeutic and it's it's nice just to sit down and and talk because like i said like everybody likes to talk whether they realize it or not but just to have a, a format like this where we could do it it's always fun. So, if you got anything you want to leave on, uh, go on with it. And uh, if not, you know, we'll see you guys next time. And we'll try to have this podcast named by the next time that uh, we get together with y'all. Yep. Uh, the only thing I got to say, man, is next time you go out to a store, go to Lowe's or Walmart or something, pick you up a plant. And try to try to take care of a plant and see see what you can do with it. See how many you can make out of it. See if you can make some money out of it. Hey, That's well, uh, we'll have to have an episode where we could uh, tell the people how to make some money out of it. That's actually a great idea to me. And great advice, bro. I got a new plant table. Got to send you a picture of it. Yeah. Yeah, I just got like two fiddle leaf figs and a rubber plant uh, for like 20 bucks, man. 20, 30 bucks. It's crazy because each Philly fig goes for like 30. And if you grow them for like a year or so and propagate them, bro, you can make some fucking. Well, hey, we're going to uh, we're going to let you do that. We're going to keep up with the progress. We'll put it on the uh, put it on the Instagram or something. Damn, some lightning just popped out there. I don't know if y'all can hear it now, too. So with that, like I said, We'll see you guys later, and uh, we appreciate y'all listening. Uh, if you could give us a like, a share, a comment, any kind of feedback, email us at info at makingamillennial.com, right? <laughs> yep. Hey, Correct. even when it's late, bro, professional. All right, Cam, man, until next time, I'll talk to you, and... We'll hear from y'all next time. All right. Peace, man.